Hey, welcome to the Ani Shop. Today we are gonna to talk about tank versus tankless. You know, after two decades in this industry, I can tell you I have heard just about every myth there is to say about tankless water heaters. And that's the topic of this, today's video. I've got a list of eight myths that are being told about tankless. It's sponsored by Renai. Let's do this. Tankless won't work as well with hard water or scale. Now, I don't know how to approach this one. I got it. A few days ago on a job, I tore out an old tank water heater and installed a tankless. But I took that old tank with me back to the shop so camera guy Chris and I could cut a hole in the side of it and take a look inside and see what was in there. I gotta tell you, this water heater was installed about 15 years ago. It's got a whole bunch of sediment inside, some scale, some mineral deposits, and rust. Now the well water feeding it wasn't treated. And so the inside of all the plumbing fixtures and all the piping are gonna look similar to the inside of this tank, pretty dirty. This isn't a tank water heater problem though. It also wouldn't be a tankless water heater problem. It's actually a water quality problem. And so you have to treat the water before you expect your plumbing to last any length of time, especially a water heater. So it's an investment you're gonna put into your home or into your business, treat the water going into it, it'll last a lot longer. Tankless does not do well with cold groundwater temperatures. Now that just isn't true. So here in Minnesota, we have 40 degree water coming out of our well into our house. We typically set a water heater like this at 120 degrees for our customers. Now, if you do the math, that's an 80 degree temperature swing. And this unit right here will give me up to five gallons per minute under those parameters. So I know what you're gonna ask me next. How many showers can I take at one time? Or how many fixtures can I run all at once through a tankless? Well, the math is pretty simple. A typical shower uses two to two and a half gallons per minute. A kitchen faucet, one and a half to two. So if you start doing math like how many showers can I take, Think about the temperature we set these at, 120 degrees. Most people do not shower with a full 100% 120 degree water. We actually mix it down with cold water. So we're using roughly 85% or so of the capacity. So really, of the capacity of the shower actually in hot water. So really, we're talking like 1.5 to 1.7 gallons per minute of hot water through that shower. That's not near its full capacity. That math works out to be roughly three showers at one time using this unit under those parameters. If you live somewhere warmer, you can actually get more hot water out of a unit like this. But that whole myth about it not working well with cold water just isn't true. I've proven it. My family's proven it. I've got them in my own house. I could go on and on, but the math doesn't lie. That is a total myth. Tankless is expensive to purchase and install as compared to a tank water heater. Well, let's face it, over the last few years, we've seen prices of building materials skyrocket. Inflation, pandemic, you name it. About five or six years ago, we saw the government implement a plan that mandated the energy efficiency be increased for tank water heaters. Well, this actually increased the cost of a tank water heater as expected. And so now we're dealing in with situations that are common where a tank water heater is actually more expensive than a tankless. Now a professional plumber should be able to install a tankless water heater in not much more time than it takes to install a tank. Admittedly, it could take a little bit longer, but in most cases, they've become so common and they've become so easy to install with the new technology and the way they're packaging these units that I would say it is not more expensive to purchase or install a tankless water heater. Venting for tankless water heaters is too expensive. Now, let's talk about that for a second. I've got two different models on the wall right here, a condensing unit and a non-condensing unit. Now this model here, you can see that big pipe on the outside or up at the top there. It's actually a pipe within a pipe. It's a direct vent appliance using a concentric vent system. So it kind of looks like it's proprietary, but actually it's really common in this industry. The inside pipe is aluminum. That's where the flue gases go. The outside pipe is plastic. The combination, the system itself, isn't expensive. 
Now this model, the condensing water heater, actually has PVC attached to it for its venting. You might be able to use indoor air for the combustion, which would save money and time because you're not running a second pipe to the outside. But even if you did, PVC is one of the most common pipes in America for plumbing systems. So PVC venting, not expensive. Overall, I would say just looking at these two examples, that tankless venting is not too expensive. It takes too long for hot water to get to my sink using a tankless. Well, I'm not exactly sure where this came from because in my estimation, it doesn't take long at all if you're using the right unit. But in any case, no matter whether you're using a tank or a tankless, the water is heated usually in a remote location like a mechanical room. And maybe you're talking about a faucet all the way across the house. It would take a little while for that water that's already in that pipe to clear out with hot water, but it doesn't matter how you're heating it. Actually, Renai offers many units that have recirculating pumps inside of them, and these units can actually keep that line hot at all times for you. It saves a ton of water and it saves a ton of energy. So look into that if you're waiting a long time for water to get to your faucet. Stainless steel heat exchangers are better than copper heat exchangers. Well, let's dispel this myth right now. This is a condensing water heater by Renai. It is actually made out of stainless steel. But that's because the condensation that forms from the cooling flue gases inside of this unit are actually pretty acidic. That water that drains out of the bottom of it would eat through copper pretty quickly. That doesn't mean that copper is a poor material for a heat exchanger. It just means that stainless steel is better for condensing appliances. Now, a lot of manufacturers only use stainless steel. That can be problematic. Not only is it harder to manufacture with, it's actually more expensive. Let's take a look at this non-condensing water heater by Renai. Now, if you look right here, that's actually a copper heat exchanger. We've been using copper in plumbing for decades because of its strength and durability. Now, it's also really great at transferring energy super fast. So using a copper heat exchanger like this one in a tankless water heater makes a ton of sense. Renai uses both stainless and copper, but they use it where it makes the most sense for them. And I gotta say, makes sense to me. Stainless steel heat exchangers are better than copper heat exchangers. That myth is busted. Low gas pressure makes installing tankless unaffordable. So let's get into this for a second. Renai uses this inducer motor. It's kind of like an exhaust fan or like a turbo on an engine, okay? So this fan actually works with this electronic gas valve to bring gas in through the bottom where it's connected through this pipe, right? And it's just like supercharging it to the burner that's right here. Now the combination of this technology has actually lowered the cost of installing a tankless compared to years past. So you've probably heard in the past that whenever you replace a tank water heater, you have to upgrade the gas line. That's not always true. I think it's a total myth. Tankless is a new technology and is not proven. Well, I can prove this one wrong. So I've had tankless in my house for over 10 years and my family never has taken a cold shower. Also, let's go back in time a little bit, about 100 years when Renai started making appliances and in the 60s, they started making tankless water heaters, installing them all over Japan, hundreds of thousands of them. In the 1990s, they started importing tankless into North America. Now, I've been installing them since the early 2000s. I don't have any customers complaining. I couldn't afford to. I wouldn't be in business if tankless wasn't a proven technology. I've literally installed hundreds of them. So the notion that tankless is a new technology and isn't proven, it's a total lie. You know, over the last two decades, I've installed literally dozens and dozens of tankless water heaters. And when I sit down with a client to talk about either converting to tankless from a tank, or if we're doing new construction, we're gonna install a tankless from the start, the conversation usually revolves around three main subjects. Endless hot water, space, and efficiency. So let's start with efficiency. A tankless water heater like this is upwards of 95% efficient. A standard tank water heater is down in the 60% percentile efficiency ratings. That doesn't even compare in my opinion. 
Now space. So a 50 gallon tank water heater is about 24 plus inches in diameter, depending on how tall it is. That's two feet of space on my floor in a very compact mechanical room or closet, let's say, for example. So if you're looking to gain a little bit of space, we can take it up off the floor and put it on the wall, freeing up some space below it for storage, maybe. Then if, and then, then endless hot water. Now, I've raised two kids along with my wife, Heather, and I tell you what, when they hit the teenage years, they stay in that shower for what seems like an eternity. We never run out of hot water because when you turn a hot water faucet on in your house, your tankless water heater turns on immediately and won't stop until you turn it off. So endless hot water, literally, it won't time out, it won't stop making hot water. Now, those three things are pretty important to my customers. If they weren't, we wouldn't be talking about it nearly every single time we're talking about putting it in tankless. You know, I hope you were able to learn something from this video. If I've left something out, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you did. We put out video content all the time. Check us out over on mechanicalhub.com or any one of our social channels. So from the Ani shop, I hope to see you next time. Maybe it'll be a job site. See you later.